Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Well, I was very excited for you there, John. I know, right? And what are you so excited about today? I um, wonder. I don't know what. I don't know what yeah. I'm excited. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's Blood Red Scars! Blood Red Scars! But it's Big Edition, right? Is it Big Edition? No, this, this is not Big Edition. This, this is, is Normal Little Edition. edition. Little Edition. Little Edition, but this is the battle in the Pacific. Ah, John's box wait. is very rattly, unlike this one, because it's been opened already. Oh, I see, I see. Um, when my dear friend Martin was up a uh, month or so ago, we had a bit of a test of this. Oh, you had a little go? Uh, had a little bit of a go, because he was kind of here for the weekend, and he's not... He's, he likes D&D &D and stuff. I was like, okay. will, you, will you help me figure out this game? Yeah. You know, um, if I said, do you want to play bolt action? He'd be like, nah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but will, you help, will you help me figure out this game? So we, so we played it, yeah. It's, it's quite unusual. So, Blood Red Skies, I don't, this isn't a new edition, it's just set in the Pacific. Okay, so different planes? Different planes, right. I think. Do so you want to tell them what's in the box then, John? So, right, you get yes. six Warlord Resin, my favourite, uh, F4F Wildcat fighter planes. That's truth. And up against them is six Warlord Resin A6M20s. Indeed. Which Indeed. is cool. Uh, you get your advantage flying bases. You do. The RS, it says. Blood Red Skies, funny enough. Uh, one Battle of Midway rule booklet. Mm, yes. Uh, Check. Two quick reference sheets, plastic tokens and templates. Get some cards, action cards, combat dice, self-adhesive stickers. Stickers. So you can just slap stickers on the coloured plastic on, straight and, away the plastics, you go. and away you go. Yeah. And you get some other bits and bobs. I couldn't find my laser pen. It's because it was in this box. Found it! <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Been looking for that for a while. Uh, uh, yes, yes. And I almost opened a new packet one. Mm. Right, so yeah, Blood Red Skies. So this is... Air combat. Yes. Although it's set in the, this is Central Pacific, but the midway, so you've got a picture of an aircraft carrier. This is not a game of aircraft carriers. This is a game of fighter combat. Very it's very much what this is about. And as a result of that, the combat mechanics are very different. Yeah, I've I've seen a few videos. Oh, have you? I, I have a little bit semi-pro. I wouldn't say semi-pro. But you do love but a semi. I do love a semi. And you do love a look. Fact. All right, let's show the models and stuff, and then we'll talk more about it. So, so the two different types of fighters you've got in here, you've got in white, as you mentioned, you've got the, uh, is it A6M? Is this the Zero? This is the Zero, which has been made in Warlord resin and in white. So, I mean, it's, it's white. It's a pretty clean sculpt by the looks of things. It is... It is bendy. I'm it not says, even going to try it. It's not as bendy as it would need to be to resist the John. So the A6M zeros. I mean, so these are definitely more detailed than th like um, board game pieces. You'd see the panels on the on the wings yep. and the window kind of retracted page wheels and things like that. And the retracted wheels are sculpted on the underside That's nice. as well. Yeah, I mean a lot of this. I'm not sure that the de the detail. It's not deep. No, but it's but enough, it is detailed. It's, it's going to show up with the old paint. Yeah, bottle. and these are quite small. Uh, if you want the details, like, like the um, the folded um, undercarriage, mm. you end up having to make them quite overscaled Ooh. with these kind of models. Yeah. You know, so you got to make you got to make two uh, different choices with that. Um, and then for the American ones, you get the F four Wildcat. Is that what it is? Wildcat. Wildcat. I'm just going to nod and agree because it's under here. And I'm having a look. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Four F Wildcat fighter planes. Right. Okay. So, um, really, very, quite distinctively different silhouette. It's got a fat nose. It has. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much, wide. It's much fatter. But both of these are carrier planes. Yeah. So they're 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 a little bit. They're going to be a little bit smaller ground based aircraft. So those are the planes. Again, the the Wildcat is is it's it's a clean sculpt. There's yeah, a little bit nice. of flash to cover up on these. Again, so if this is the kind of game, and it isn't a long game to play. I think we, we barely knew what we were doing, and it took us about an hour. 
Okay, this is good um, news. But that was I with like a small that. number of aircraft. That wasn't using everything in the box. That was maybe three each. Okay. Something like that. Um, so this is this feels very much like a club game, maybe an after game or a before, you know, like a warm-up game, yeah. a filler-type game. Um, I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean no. like in terms of play length and ease of setup refreshing. and so forth. So you're likely to be actually dragging this around in the box. So these kind of pieces being a little bit more rugged, a little it's bit. Not, I think yeah. that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, good. So it's probably worth talking good. about these advantage flight stands, though. Yeah. Um, at that point, because this is kind of a key mechanic of the game. If you've not seen it, um, I've got a fresh box here, and they're already. There's no faffing. You don't have yeah. to try and put the ball joint into the base, which is good because I can imagine <laughs> I'd end up. <laughs> oh yeah, like yeah. That. I hadn't considered so, that. So I mean, that's that's a bonus. They come already good to go. They do, um, and they have a little triangle on the underside which pins into the flight stand, and this is actually quite important. Now, some of these were quite tight. I seem to remember. Yeah, the one I've got here is is pretty tight. You can get it in and out, and I don't know whether that's the resin being a bit flexible. I think it might. Be, whether yeah. it's you know, so it's not it's not falling out, but you can't really glue these in. And there's a reason for that, which is that on the flight stand you have this bit of card, and that is the skill level of the pilot. Right. So if you get, you, you've got a fresh Ooh, sheet. I've got all sorts underneath So if you, if you pull your tray out, so you can show them the sheet of tokens, because um, again, this is kind of a, oh, wow. kind of a, a key mechanic of the game. So we're looking at these wings here, are we? With all yeah. the skills and so bits and bobs. So if you can see on those, they're, they're color coded in terms of that's the skill of the pilot. I think right. they're, they're double sided. Yeah. So there's there's one skill on one side and one on another. Three and two. So you've got quite a range. Um, but you need to punch that center piece out, the little almost oh, ship like size. Yeah. And it fits that fits around the mount for the side. ball joint. Yep. And it fits in quite snug. So you can get them in and out, but again, they're not gonna fall out or anything like that. Okay. Um and so this is the skill level of the pilot, and when you play pickup games, pilot skill is random. Eh. So you can, as much as you can build your army, yeah. as it were. I'm taking this, these fighters and these fighters and I've paid these points for them. But the skill levels... The skill level is a much bigger thing. So, for example, um, if you get some of the cards... I don't know whether you've got, got them out. Mine's still just, sealed. Yours are still sealed. Well, what's going to happen with these is I'm going to send these to Callum. Way right over yonder. Uh, oh, I've got the aircraft cards now. All of the cards. Right, here we go. So... The A6 M20 has got a firepower rating of one. Right. But when you shoot, you add your skill level to that. Okay. And the skill level goes from two to five. Right. And does that equate to how many dice you roll? Yeah. Or does that, right. So I get one from the plane and two to five from the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see where I'm going yeah, with this? That's, that's, yeah. yeah. So this, and, and I like that because that's that this, the, Air-to-air -air combat is about pilot skill, overwhelmingly. Definitely there are better, there are superior and inferior aircraft. Yeah. And you have three different ratings. I forget what they are. I think this is speed, um, maneuverability, and firepower. I think right. that's what that is. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember now. I played it about a month ago. Um, so the, the two factions are quite different. So the Wildcat has two firepower one maneuverability and six speed compared to 137, something quite different aircraft okay, yeah. in that respect. Very um, but as I say, when you actually try and do anything, you add pilot skill numbers to these. Okay. So these numbers are not, at the, like the firepower number is, is not nearly as important. Actually shooting a plane down is more a factor of pilot skill, relative skill, than the there's firepower. a few other things, isn't there, as well, with the, the flight stand? Isn't there advantage in bits and bobs like yes. that? Yes. That... So, in terms of the, me the mechanics of the game, the reason why you have these flight stands is really integral to it is you have an advantage and disadvantage. So, an advantage plane is in a climbing position. <laughs> it worries it's going to snap it. Uh, that's normal, and that's disadvantaged. You can only shoot at a plane that you have superior advantage to. Really? You can only take a shot. So neutral on neutral. Neutral on neutral, you can't shoot. Okay. But what you can do is try and outmaneuver it. 
And if you try and outmaneuver it, you force that plane down an advantage Ooh. level. Okay. So you can, but again, this ends up being more a factor of pilot skill and maneuverability than it is the actual shoot. But only when it's disadvantaged over over something else. Can you stop can you shoot? Plugging at them. Yeah. That's cool. So arcs of fire turning, all of those things are all still very important. But fundamentally, you really you need a group of planes because every turn one of your actions can be to climb. So yeah, it's quite it's, it's quite easy if a plane wants to just not be shot at, it can just keep moving and, uh, and climbing. And you're gonna need probably multiple planes to be able to force that. So it's kind it of down, abstracting and that out, wingman. and then the other man shoots him. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and there are, so there are certain things, normally it's like a skill test to try and say, if I'm within a distance of you, so I'm gonna try and outmaneuver you. Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to try and yeah. do. And I'm trying to force you into disadvantage with, with a plane. But if I manage to get on your tail, you're automatically knocked into disadvantage. Oof. It's like you're boned if that happens. That's it. But again, there's a rule in there. There was a little chart, a diagram you were showing it. You can cover it with, with you having a wingman. So if a, net, if a friendly plane has got an arc of fire covering your tail, you can't be... Yep. Caught behind. There's all sorts of shenanigans going on back here. Yeah. It's a lot less complicated than it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of sort of, there's a lot of swirling around and not a lot of shooting that takes place. Okay. Jockeying for position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, so conceptually, that's like a, a really interesting idea. The difficulty with a lot of games that talk about these things, like they often have quite dull mechanics. Yes. And is that the case? Uh, um, no, because it's very dicey, and it is a game where only sixes matter. So you roll a lot Sweet. of dice, looking looking for. In the in the case of these, you, you know, you have you have numbers on, but I think they almost never matter. I'm not sure they ever mattered. Ace is high. Ace is matter, but you roll multiple dice, and you get certain numbers of successes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So rather than um, planes being destroyed, normally you you do attract these boom chits oh, and so forth. So you have chits. force morale. So it's, it's representing damage and sort of lack of will to continue. Okay. So um, yeah, it was it was an interesting little game. We've gone off topic. Grab some items. What else is in this box? Okay. So you've seen the planes. Mm. Great. Awesome. Yeah. You've seen the dice. Great, awesome. Yeah, so you and you got a decent number of dice. You got, you got 12 also, dice. Three, there. Six, nine, 12, 12 dice. 12 of these. Seem quite weighty. Yeah, they, they, you know, they're and they're, they're a good size. I think they're 16 mil dice. Aces so, high. Aces. Very much aces high. Way. They've got uh, tally marks and playing card aces. I think that's, you know, keeping it in the. Keeping it in the theme. It's pretty solid. Um, yep. Obviously, you've got your quick reference sheets, which are awesome. Quick reference sheets, These yep. look as if they will be handy. Uh, the, they're, showing you shoot they're very positions. handy. The complicated-looking stuff on the back really isn't that complicated. No, once you have this... a context of what it is. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Ab absolutely. Because it's essentially, there are times when you need to check to see if this is the case. And normally, right. it's, you're trying to get on my tail, and I want to know, I think I might have somebody that's able to cover that. Right. So I'm just going to check that. Do you know what I mean? Sweet, sweet. Uh, fundamentally, it says, so that's it. The this is your turn shoot, sequence. Burn. You shoot, you can burn for advantage, you can move, and you can take a part of action. One action. And five. End of the activation. That's it. Yeah. The and shooting end. is at the beginning, not the end of your turn, so you've got to set up the shot. Oh, okay. But more importantly, you can take a shot at the beginning of the turn if you start the turn in position. Wow. All right? Yep. That's going to take some... Yep. Um, to stick it on with the old car thing, you've already seen a bit of this. You've got your skill tokens, uh, your, your blast markers. Boom chits. Boom chits. What are and these wings chips. for? Uh, Do we know they're they activation like markers. Because it's markers. got alternating activation. Okay. I think you might move. You might activate in order of advantage. Yes, not skill. I think, or, no. I think it's I th both. I, I think it's order. Of, it's advantage then skill. Yes, I think. So it's quite a tiered level. You've got to yes. work down. Yes. High skill. Who's in advantage? Blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, so it's, that's it's that's a fair bit of the game. Yeah. Uh, other card components. You get some beautiful clouds. You get some clouds, and it's double sided. They're islands on the other side. 
I'm not, I'm not sure what you would need islands for. Well, you, uh, there might be bombing missions. Yeah, quite possibly. There might be bombing there missions. Must be. So this this is your terrain. <laughs> Which you get some. Class. You get something. You can you, you get can something. Get it straight absolutely. down onto Because this table. is an air combat game, right? You could you could literally play it on on a bare board. Oh, there's another card piece. There is another card piece. Which has got all sorts. It's got battle boaties. <laughs> so this is this this is a scenario. Sheets, this is a scenario sheet component. Um, and it's another thing that Warlord do sometimes with their starter sets is they're providing you cardboard tokens to allow you to play an expanded version of the game before you bought the miniatures. So they're bombers. Right. So you can play, if you play in the Escort the Bombers mission, yep. then you've you've, got... you can play that out of this set before you go out and buy the resin models. I mean, which I think I think is good. That's good. It's good. It lets you try, it lets you get a bit more into the game before you commit more money. Yeah, true facts. That's what those things are. Uh, what other bits have we got here? Oh, I've got a whole stack of cards here. Yes. What What have I got? I don't really want to open these. <laughs> no. <laughs> a, it's going to take me forever to get through. Um, so these are the things that start to provide as you play the um, the advanced game. These are going to provide the new ones. So it, some of these um, aircraft come with some of these cards. Okay. And they have options for others. And I think what happens is if you've got a negative is you always have that. And there's a deck from which you draw cards and these are gonna give you little bonuses, but they're gonna flavor these units awesome. a little bit more. Uh, so for if I've got one here, Deep Pockets. Um, in reaction Ooh. to Deep Pockets, Squadron, so you play it when you get a boom chip. Boom. And what do you do is you disregard the boom chip. Boom. Yeah. I just like the game because it's got boom chits. It's got boom chits in it. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got those. Obviously, you get your uh, you get your playing cards. They're you do. Kind of handy. And you get the ones. Oh, you get for... other ones as well, do you? Yes. So well, you get, the, you get the bomber. Is that the bomber? Okay. Is, you get the bomber. Oh, yeah. Dive bomber. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I think you get the I think you get the three types. I think you get a... Um, Mark out zero. Yeah. Uh, so you get... It, for example, the American cat, you've got the Dauntless, the Devastator, and the Wildcat. These are the three Double aircraft that they carry. Up. This is a um, the fighter, the torpedo bomber, and the dive bomber. Sweet. And I assume it's the same for the Japanese. Yeah, you've got the K, the Val, and the Zero. Cool. So these are the, this is what an air wing is made up of in right. 1943. Midway, this, these are the things. Although for this game, you're only really interested in the fighters. If the bombers are on the table... Are they targets. just rolling objectives and... They're, they're like, protect this thing. Right. You remember the saying about covering the tail mm. and stuff? That's still a thing. Okay. Yeah. This is cool. So, for example... Yeah, they've, they've, they've given a lot of thought to that. Uh, smaller sundries and bits and bobs. Let's, let's, there is a sprue. There is. So, it does have proprietary tokens. Nice. Uh, um, and that proprietary token... I'm not is seeing it, any shapes though. They got numbers a, on them. The, not kill team style, which is a ruler, <laughs> which isn't that big a deal. But this allows you, you put your these divots line up with with the base, with the base. and because because line of sight and angles is a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is your turning circle. Is what that's for. Nice. Yeah, so you you line that up and you can make a, a 45 degree turn. That's okay, how, that, that's, that's cool. That's, that's cool. That's how that works. Yeah, so there's there's no scope for a disagreeing about how that Good. has worked. Are these like entry points, these arrows, like gene steel entry points? What? I, I assume that these are we well, like reinforcement points. I'm not actually in the tester games that I played, I was not required to use these. Sweet. And there's and plenty of other bits. This was the, well. These were the I have had to activate tokens. Oosh. Yeah, but it's good that they provide, because you could just use the ruler, right? This is just a plastic ruler. Yeah, but it's fun. Look, they fit in there. and you They can, do. Yeah, and it goes up to, it it goes up to seven, because yep. you put the zero against you. So you slot your base. into the zero. You slot into the zero, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's also provided the six inch ruler. I think this is your shooting range, which is your si which is a it's six got inch. Like tracer but bullets. again, it's cir it's circled onto so it it fits no, there. Because you can't fire at an angle, right? Obviously. So it's just straightforward. Yeah, absolutely. That's my arc of fire. Okay, this is cool, man. Yeah, I'd like to see so the, it. The, the the proprietary tokens are meaningful, but they're not. 
actually essential. It's okay. just good that they provide it. They make game they make gameplay a lot easier. Awesome. You even get like little bombs I on saw the that, air yeah. for, the, for the bombers. So it's like this is my bomb load. Right. Have I dropped it? Have I not dropped so you know, it? Which one's have? Spent, spent you know load. when you've spent the load. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Happy days, right? Uh, final pieces. You got your stickers. Mm. Yeah, and these are sti this, like so stickers, stickers and what slide transfer decal sheets. So you can play it as solely a board game. Yeah, if you're playing it in like, you know, I just want to get these on the table, you can just stick these straight onto the pre-coloured plastic and they're going to look... If you really want to. If you wanted to, you know. And, no, but some, some people are not big on painting and, and all that kind of stuff. No, I mean, like, you could just leave them blue versus white, you know. Oh, I mean, see, you don't even I think it's a five-minute job putting a sticker on. Yeah, you know. If I wasn't going to paint them, I would <laughs> use the stickers. So that's um, cool. But if you are going to paint them, put the effort in. They've got these lovely you've set of water slide decals, which has got some really small stuff on, which my eyes are not so good at. But you've got the, you've got the, the oh fuselage um, identify numbers. And if you're a proper rivet head, these w these refer to particular groups within the carrier air wing. Yeah. So you might. This is actually yeah. It's got actual information on here as well. Flown by Shotai Cho, <laughs> Konami Horada. Right. There's little bits like that. Officer commanding V VF three USS Yorktown, Midway, fourth of June, nineteen forty two. So yeah, if you actually look at it. Lieutenant Commander John S. Thatch Thack. Thatch. They've got his actual plane markings it in there. It looks like it, yeah. And that's probably this on the decal sheet because you get, yeah. You get aces. But you probably get this, yes, you do. But I think they're in like separate blister packs. But they probably only make the one decal sheet. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> but there you go. So, There's loads so of cool give, bits on They're going to need specific markings for that. Um, last thing we've got here is quite a nifty little book. Yeah, it's, it's a little A5 rule book. Um, which Whoa. really doesn't have a terrific number of rules in it, and it has scaffolded scenarios again, which I really like in starter sets. So, like mission one, one of you is playing a recon plane that has to fly off the board, the other guy has got two planes. Strong, <laughs> strong. <laughs> I like, I like the um, the sort of aesthetic of this booklet. Well, a bit like they've done with Cruel Seas. Cruel Seas is very much. It they've is. really gone for it because if you look at the art on the on the cards, it's it's quite heavily stylized to look like posters of that era where they're very limited color palettes. Yeah. Um, because of the way that the color is produced. That's a nice touch. Yeah. So if you've already played the Battle of Britain stuff, this is the same rule set, but what is different is this stuff which is the theater cards so these these things which you make your deck out of yeah they reflect the different conditions in the pacific okay okay yeah. um, and cool, cool. so there isn't there isn't things that are, that are unique to the kind of british situation yeah. or whatever and um, i haven't actually looked at the ba battle of britain cards yet so i don't actually yeah, know actual which ones there, which ones came there but this theater deck is is specific and again you have there's doctrine cards so some of it comes from your aircraft some of it comes from the particular doctrine that you might be using and some of it comes from your theater and those things all mix and blend together with this combination of pilot skills it's saying you may have six better planes than me but i still may be the one that's likely to win yeah because things like the skill level were random they're usually scenario based as well so it'll tell you unless it says otherwise in the scenario use this but pilot skill it might be that the game is unbalanced okay there's loads of stuff Mm. But a lot of this booklet is scenarios. Yeah, scenario rules, special scenarios, historic theatre cards. Tell you what to do. Balancing forces, lots of info and bits and bobs. There's also a bit of history on the back. There is. Happy days. Mate, I don't know how much more there is to say about this. I know what I'm going to do with it is I played a tester game of it and I thought I, I thought it was all right. Yeah. It was a nice, a nice fill again. But I also know that Callum's a little bit interested in that. Oh, is and, he? And like everything on the channel not finding the time to get the painting and the modeling done Now the modeling in this is quite straightforward i will i will freely yes, admit yeah. the modeling is straightforward painting not so much callum was interested so i am going to send both of these sets to brush and quill and he's going to keep one, one and get one back painted at some point oh, at which like point you deal. might see it on here and i'm saying might because if i find the time i'm going to paint up the airfix version that's the big the one, Battle right? of Britain, Sweet. yeah. The Battle of Britain. I mean, it's not that I'm not interested in Midway or Blood Red Skies. It's just personally, we do the British German thing. 
right? Yeah, we do. And if I was wanting to do Pacific carrier battles, for me, I'd want the aircraft carriers. Of course. Yeah. Uh, or, or the Marines, probably. That would be an epic piece of scenery, that. You know, that that, that whole kind of air-sea-land battle thing. Um, but yeah, I think as, a, as an introductory product to the system, I think it really does have all of the things that you'll need, including sort of cardboard pieces that allow you to make those next few steps and decide if it's really what you want. Uh, if you're looking for a, a very a very gamey and still fun attempt to simulate dogfighting... Well, it's cool, just because they're all like, well, you can do yeah, this with yeah. your bodies. Absolutely, I think it's I think it's it's done a fairly good job of that. Yeah. It's not hideously complicated. Okay, cool. you don't record altitude. It's that, kind of abstracted oh, okay. all yeah. of that yeah. out and made it into fun into the advantage disadvantage thing. Yeah, cool. I think I think that's all I got to say about Blood Red Skies. Sweet. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content. Like the video. Maybe leave us a comment. Thank you. Because it's going to be advantage unless it pretty much all the time. Sorry about that, we just had <laughs> a bit of a catastrophic uh, Johnny B moment there.